Welcome to Your Health Matters. I'm Dr. Magna Porterfield. And I'm Ron Porterfield. And today we're going to be talking about the healing power in outdoor life. Do you spend practically all your time indoors? Well, stay tuned. You might want to change that after hearing us talk about the healing power of outdoor life. Honey, yes. we're going to talk about this wonderful program and topic, aren't we? Yes, we are. So what would you like to start with? What exactly is an outdoor life? An outdoor life is a, is a desire, really, about uh, spending as much time outside as possible because we've realized that doing so brings about many health benefits. You know, we spend way too much time inside. We do. You know, we, we work, many of us, not everyone, but a lot of people work indoors. Uh, we certainly, we live indoors. We sort of drive indoors, so mm -hmm. to speak. You know, we're inside of a, a vessel, a vehicle, yes, driving yes. down. So we're, uh, many times we're inside of a building and God has created a world that is sin scarred as it is, mm -hmm. that there's still lots of benefits that we can have if we would get outside of four walls ah. and get more fresh air and sunshine. But I don't want to get ahead of myself here. We're going to talk about that. So just being outside of the four walls can be healing, but I'm guessing that it's more than just being outside because I can go and stand outside this building. Very true. And there may be some healing benefits, but I have a feeling it's a little more than that. You're right. You, you are very right. We want to get as close to as much green space as possible. Now, we noted in a, a previous program we did, mm -hmm. you talked about some studies that had done about uh, people who were mentally uh, benefited by being in areas of green space. Yes. And even though that green space was sort of manufactured. Yes, it so was like, in the city. That's right. So even in the city, it could mm -hmm. be at a park. Mm -hmm. It could be outside in, in the backyard in our garden. Mm -hmm getting deep in as much green natural space as possible. And that's what we're talking about. So it really is important to spend more time outside, right? Yes, it is. It really is important. And to get out from under different, as I mentioned, f fluorescent lights and LED lights or whatever they may be, and get God's natural light. Mm -hmm. And as we go on, we'll see that it, it does have some rather uh, remarkable health benefits uh, for our being. Yeah. So um, is there anything more you want to say is that's really important to spending more time outside? Well, you know, we've gotten so used, accustomed to this uh, artificial light. You know, we can walk into a building, flip a switch, and uh, we've sort of gotten used to that. Uh, we, can, uh, we don't have to even flip a switch now. We can just say, speak. I know. And have things turn on or, or turn off. And so... Not that we're God, that we just speak the word. No, but there's, no, no, no. There's no, technology no. that's developed technology, that. Technology, right. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. No, we're far from that. And then, you know, there's much time in front of gadgets. Mm. You know, gadgets that we carry on our hip or in our purse. Right. Our, wow. if, on our arm. Yes. yes. And then, or in front of a television or mm -hmm. in front of a computer and all that. And there again, technology can be fine, but we want to get from behind some of that and to get out in nature mm -hmm. as much as possible. So that's what that outdoor life is. This is a commitment to spend as much time in nature as much as possible because we realize there are some benefits. And we're going to talk about some of those benefits. And hopefully after uh, someone hears a few of these benefits, they will make that commitment. You know what? I do spend too much time in front of the computer. You know what? I do spend too much time inside. I want to get outside more mm -hmm. in some green area so I can get some of these benefits uh, mentally and physically so, and spiritually. And so nature is essential for good health is basically what we're saying. Yes. Getting outside and getting exposed to nature. So tell us more about time and nature. Yes. You know, it's, a, it's interesting that you mentioned that because I was a researcher and he mentioned this. He says, we often think about uh, access to nature as a perk. Oh, let's go out in nature. This is something different. Yeah, we He's, do. Yeah, it's a perk. It's like a bonus, something yeah. extra. But he said this, you should start thinking of these experiences as a necessity that we need to maintain and sustain healthy lives. That's a whole different mindset. Right. So this is science, scientific research starting to say that. Get outside. Mm -hmm. Yes. Very important. 
So um, many people don't spend a lot of time outside, but they need to make it as a priority. We need to become more intentional. That's about right. This. Yes. And um, that's uh, important. So let's start looking at some of the health benefits of being in nature. Mm -hmm. Let's start delineating some of those. All right, sure. Well, one is it's, and I'm sure many have experienced this, is that it can be de-stressing. Mm, boy, do we need that. Yes. I mean, how, how many of us have not felt the stress just melt away as we're sort of walking by the beach and we're just sort of sitting there and looking and you, those waves crashing oh, yeah. on the shore. It's relaxing. I mean, I hope that, that if you think about it right now, <laughs> your mind is going there. You can almost sense, you can almost feel that. Now, hopefully, even as you're thinking about this, you're relaxing right now. But aside from just being a nice feeling, it actually has been scientific, scientifically studied and showed that uh, through studies that when people go out into these types of places like forests, that they notice that there are change, physiological changes in their body. For instance, there was a study done where they took uh, two groups of stu students. One group of students, they went into a forest for a weekend. Another group of stu students, they were in the city somewhere. And they found that the students that were in the forests, they showed lower levels of cortisol than the students that were in the city. Now, cortisol is a hormone that is used for a stress marker. Mm -hmm. So they determined that those students that were out there in the green space, in the natural spaces, had lower stress levels than those who spent time in the city. They're also de able to determine from the study that um, those students in the forest, in those green spaces, they had lower heart rates than the ones as compared to those that were in the city. So one benefit right away is lower stress levels. Yes, and you can measure that by the hormone level and how fast the heart is beating. That's, That's good right. to know. Mm -hmm. Another benefit is what? What can we share as another benefit? Yes, they found that also that spending time out in natural spaces and green spaces, as they call them, it helps to reduce inflammation. Mm. And so we want to be able to have, we don't want to have high inflammation levels. We're talking about chronic inflammation. And you will find that in many people who are suffering from some sort of uh, disease process, whether it be diabetes or heart disease or whatever it is, they have a level of chronic inflammation. And so that's not good. So they determined that spending time out can help to reduce chronic inflammation in the body and, you know, which is responsible for a great many of disorders. I mentioned that. Also things like bowel disease, depression, cancer. These are also associated with high inflammation in the body. So being in green spaces can help that. In another study, they found that uh, being out in nature was able to lower um, this is in elderly people, um, cardiac uh, markers that showed inflammation for cardiac disease, heart disease. So time and time again, they're showing that uh, being in nature can certainly help reduce inflammation. So being in nature can, or being outdoor too, can reduce inflammation. It can de-stress. De-stress. And um, what are some other things? What about any specific, what about cancer? You know, that's a big area. Can, Absolutely. Can nature help with that? Well, they, the studies are preliminary right now. I see. But uh, the research is promising. They're showing that uh, spending time in forests may stimulate the production of anti-cancer proteins. Interesting. Yes, yes. As a matter of fact, in Japan, uh, they, something that's very prevalent, they call it forest bathing. Forest bathing, forest I've heard of bathing. that. Yes, mm -hmm. it's simply going out and just being surrounded by nature and forest for a long period of time. So that's already a custom. As a matter of fact, it's considered a form of preventative medicine. And they also found that in areas where there's greatest forest coverage, that they have lower mortality rates from a wide variety of cancers. Wow. Yes. That is really something. Mm -hmm. Just think of our cancer, cancer. There's a lot of few cancer institutes I've heard of 
of around, at least in here in the United States. I wonder what results they would have if they took their cancer patients out into nature as part of their treatment. Oh, I think we should spend more time outside. And yeah, certainly on this program, Your Health Matters, we look at a wide variety of yes. lifestyle factors and all that. So we're not saying that you eat, is, eat the way you want to, go to sleep the way you want to, and just spend time and out, yeah. out in the woods, right? Yeah, yeah. But this is certainly shown to be a, a, a huge uh, benefit. Yeah, yeah. And um, I, I know that when I get out into nature, it, it, I feel really good. Yes. You have an example, but I don't know if you want to say anything before that example of when you worked at Uchi Pines Institute about a cancer patient you worked with. Did you want to say anything before you gave that example? Yes, 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 yes. And I, I really, it was a great privilege to be able to work at this lifestyle center for many years. Uh, you mentioned Uchi Pines Institute, and I got to work with a number of individuals over my years there and learned a lot, and it was a blessing. As a lifestyle consultant. As a lifestyle kind of, counselor, yeah, yes. counselor. And um, I remember this one particular person that I was working with, this man, him and his wife were there, and his body was racked with cancer. He was in pain. And I remember going into his room one morning, and it, it, all of the, 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 the windows were, the shades, the, the curtains were, were pulled. Mm -hmm. They were shut. It was dark in there, mm -hmm. and I could smell the, the miasma of, hmm, I could say cancer. Mm -hmm. I don't know if anyone's ever smelled that, uh, but it's a very distinctive odor. Interesting. And so I said to his wife who was there with him, I said, you know, we have to get him out. We just can't let him just lie here. He was in pain. He, you know, he didn't want to move. I said, let's get him outside. So we opened all the windows, let some sunlight come in. We opened the door to the terrace. We, I took him outside. We, um, we went out to the lounge there on the terrace, put some blankets on there. And me and his wife, we got him up. We helped him outside. It was a cool May morning, very brisk. We put him there on the chaise lounge. We wrapped him up nice and snug. And almost immediately, I saw a change in his whole countenance. Mm. The air was invigorating. The sun was brilliant in the sky, gleaming and just putting a wonderful glow over the whole environment. And he brightened up. He was watching the birds and the squirrels play. And I just saw a completely night and day change in his countenance. He was invigorated from being outside to from uh, to being in that dark, dank room. Mm. And I believe that uh, research bears out too that as we uh, have more of these experiences in outdoor life, yes. that it will be beneficial for our physical and of course you know too, our from mental. our mental health. That's right, that's right. And Spiritual as well, as well, I believe. What a nice example of the healing power of outdoor life, just in that example. Absolutely. Well, um, you have a, a slide that you want to share with us from yes. a quote that Ellen White says regarding nature. That's absolutely right. The servant of the Lord, Ellen White, she says in the book, Councils on Health, this comes from page 170, 170, it says this, nature is God's Physician, mm -hmm. the pure air, the glad sunshine, the beautiful flowers and trees, the orchids and vineyards and outdoor exercise amid these surroundings are health giving. Mm -hmm. The elixir of life, outdoor life is the only medicine that many invalids need. Its influence is powerful to heal sickness caused by fashionable life, a life that weakens and destroys the physical, mental, and spiritual powers. Wow, that's a lot. Yes. Nature is God's physician. Yes, but here we have scientific research uh, validating what the Lord gave to Ellen White over a hundred years ago. Yes. She said that it's healing, it's life-giving, that it's the life giver. She calls nature God's physician. That's just powerful. And you know, some people are living in the city right now and it's challenging for them to yes. get to nature. We realize yes. that. Yes. But any effort that you put forth, viewer, if you're in that situation, any effort you put forth, God will bless. And I encourage you, even if you live in a city, ask God to open up doors and opportunities and means for you to be able to get out into nature. I'm sure he'll do that and I encourage you to do so. As we wrap up, 
Let's talk about outdoor life and creation and the earth made new, something spiritual. What can you tell us about that? Yes, you know, in the beginning, in creation, God, he put us in a beautiful garden. Amen. He started us out with outdoor life. Is that right? As a matter of fact, uh, Genesis 1 verse 8, it says, And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. That is in the garden. Verse 15 from chapter 1, it says, And the Lord God took the man and put him he put him into a garden of Eden and dressed it to dress it and keep it. So he put us in a garden and he gave us work to do. We're to be outside having this, these activities in the outdoor life. But you know, it was not only in the beginning. Of course, we know we had outdoor life too. The, the uh, children of Israel, as they went through the Exodus, they had 40 years of outdoor mm -hmm. life, didn't they? Mm -hmm. But we know that's also going to be the case in the earth made new. Outdoor life in eternity. Revelation chapter 22, verse 1, it says, And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. Isn't that wonderful? Praise God. So I think about that pure water. Verse 2, In the midst of the street of it, on either side of the river, was, the, was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. Mm. So we can see that even in the earth made new, we're going to have these wonderful, these precious opportunities of having vibrant outdoor life. What a blessing. Yes. What a blessing. I'm looking forward to that time. Are you a viewer? I hope you are. That Eden will be restored again. And each one of us have an, uh, have an opportunity to be in that outdoor life where we will live forever. I am just so excited about that time that is coming and I hope you are too. But while we're here on this earth, based on what you share today, I hope that you're encouraged to see what can I do to be more intentional about experiencing that outdoor life. As I mentioned earlier, if you ask God, he will open the doors and show you how you can do that so that your health will be enhanced physically, mentally, and spiritually. Stay tuned as we share with you another natural remedy. Hello, it's natural remedy time. Today we're gonna to be demonstrating and talking about the cold bath and the neutral bath. First, we'll start with the neutral bath. We have Hernando here, he's in the bathtub. And so some of the benefits for the neutral bath, if a person is uh, having challenges with, with anxiety, if they're having challenges with insomnia, if they're having challenges with irritability, then a neutral bath can be of great benefit. So. For a neutral bath, you would simply want the temperature of the water to be about 94 to 97 degrees Fahrenheit, very close to the person's body temperature. And for the duration of this remedy, this would be anywhere from 15 minutes to about a half an hour. And this remedy, this neutral bath, has been known to bring great relief. It's a wonderful bath to take before going to bed. Um, as I mentioned, uh, also anxiety. This helps to calm the spirits, helps to relax the person. Um, you know, we are in such a fast-paced world today, and I think that many people might benefit by taking this neutral bath. Hernando is looking very relaxed already. So... <laughs> um, uh, you know, I think perhaps maybe many psychologists should prescribe neutral baths to their, to their clients. All right, so that's a little bit about the neutral bath. Remember, about 94 to 97 degrees Fahrenheit is very close to your body temperature, and um, it's not stimulating the body in any way. It's just helping to soothe and to relax. Before I leave that, leave the neutral bath, I also want to mention that this can be very beneficial for people who need a hydrotherapy remedy who are having heart problems. This can help to soothe the heart dysfunction that they may be having, whether it's heart palpitations or 
uh, arrhythmias or whatever, it can also be soothing in that way. So if someone you know is having that problem, this can be beneficial. It's also been known to be beneficial for people who are having problems with high blood pressure, the neutral bath, all right? So I also mentioned the cold bath. Now, this is where it gets a little bit more exciting, the cold bath. The cold bath is typically, typically going to range somewhere between 55 degrees Fahrenheit and 70 degrees Fahrenheit. And I think I heard you say, yes, it's going to be very, it's going to be a little chilly. Just a note here about the cold bath. Um, you, you never want to put someone who is cold into a cold bath. You don't want to do a cold application on someone that is already cold. Because one of, many of the wonderful benefits that we look for from hydrotherapy is to get the reaction from the water. There's a physiologic reaction when, their bot, when the water touches their body and while the, the application is on them or while they're in the water. But in the case of a cold remedy, if the person is already cold, then the, you cannot look for the reaction because that will be neutralized. So for a cold bath, you want to make sure that they're nice and warm first and then you can freeze them. How about that? So, for a cold bath, this would be uh, beneficial for th such things as if a person had a fever, if they had a cold, flu, or if they simply needed to be invigorated. Again, cold baths would not be beneficial for people who are weaker, they're more frail, they're emaciated, have a little bit of strength to be able to, be able to endure this. Now, this is not a, a remedy that needs to go on for very long, a cold bath is going to last only about one minute to about five minutes. Now, some have done it as long as 10 minutes. You don't have to go that long. One minute to five minutes. And it's a wonderful thing because getting in the water, for this cold water for just that short a time, it can help to work as an overall body tonic. It, that is, it's able to raise your body's activities above par. It helps to um, tone muscles, it helps to strengthen the, strengthens the heart, and it also helps to strengthen the nervous system. We're talking about a cold bath now working as a tonic. So about one to uh, five minutes, and you're good with this. Uh, there again, you don't want to put someone in here who is having problems if they're already cold, or if a person is having problems with their heart, they're having heart problems, or not if they have problems with uh, high blood pressure. You don't want to put anyone in a cold bath with a high blood pressure because when you put someone in cold water, it's going to cause their blood vessels to constrict. And if you do that with someone who is having problems with blood pressure, that's only going to cause their blood pressure to go up. So remember, we talked about the neutral bath. That would be better for the person that is having some problems with their heart or with high blood pressure. All right, so no heart problems. Uh, there again, it can be good for colds, flu. You want to invigorate the person, a body tonic, and then after they get out of this for one to one to five minutes, then dry them off and they should be good to go. They can rest for a few minutes, but they don't need to be resting for a long period of time. And um, after this uh, cold bath, or after the neutral bath, they should feel invigorated and they should feel as if they can work all day or they can have a good night's rest. This is truly two wonderful remedies that can be of great benefit and I would suggest that you try them. Now, we notice that we have this nice, huge bathtub here and not everyone has bathtubs this big or this deep. Many bathtubs these days, you, the, the feet, excuse me, the knees are exposed. I'm going to ask Hernando if he would just bend his knees and even if he would just to sit up a little bit. Okay, good. So most of the bathtubs that we have today, you know, this much is exposed. So while you're in this, you can simply just 
drape this over the person, and once that is once you wet it with e either either the neutral water or the cold water, because you want to make sure that the core is about the same temperature as the water that you're sitting in, so that you don't have this water, this part of the body exposed, and this part of the body in the water. You're trying to evenly uh, be even tempered as possible. Sometimes what you can do, even though it's a shallower bathtub, you can sink down in it a little bit. If that's comfortable for you, your neck might be wrenched a little bit, but you can sink down in it and make yourself as comfortable as possible. But this is another alternative for those bathtubs that are ni not nice and deep as this one here. And um, you should be able to have a nice treatment from this cold and neutral bath. Thank you for joining us on Your Health Matters.